let's face it, every time we do a consultation, we are not going to get a yes, I am ready to move forward when we ask the closing question. But there are some tools that we can have in our toolbox to ensure that when someone hits us with an objection, that we can eloquently even either overcome it or gather some more information so that when we follow up with that person, we're really having the information that we need so that our follow-up approach can be much more impactful and meaningful. So I learned this probably two decades ago, and it has served me so well, not only in objections in a sales environment, but also with my husband, with my staff members, with nieces and nephews, with my sister. It's just a really nice way to handle anytime somebody kind of gives you this blockade about, hey, we're not moving forward because I have this objection. And so what I think is a particularly important after I teach you this two-step process is to sit down either by yourself or with your team and write down the top five objections that you get. They are not going to be all over the map. There are typically five objections, right? I need to think about it. I want to go to other consultations. It costs too much money. I need to talk to a, you know another decision maker. There's some very basic objections that we're always going to get. And with each of those objections, I want you to work on the two-step process with each of them. It doesn't mean you just write them down and then tuck them away in your shelf and you never look at them again. If we don't practice our objection handling, we tend to look like deer in the headlights when someone hits us with an objection and they leave the consultation room and 10 minutes later, you're like, oh my gosh, I know exactly what I should have said to that person. So when we have high emotion, we have low intelligence. And the only way to kind of lower our emotion and get access to our faculties to handle whatever that person said to us is to practice, practice, practice. I know it's not fun. I know it seems rudimentary, but I promise if you do these things, you will see a marked uptick in the way that you are able to successfully handle objections when they come your way. At Botify, I'll walk around to the girls on a random day and say, hey, that's expensive. Hey, I need to talk to my spouse. Hey, I want to go down the street because they're cheaper. And that's just the practice that they can then go into with the two-step process. So two-step process, super easy. You're going to acknowledge, acknowledge the objection, and then you're going to ask a question. Why are we going to acknowledge? Because people want to be heard right? If we say, if someone says, oh, that's expensive, and we say, no, it's not, you're worth it. That's super adversarial. That's combative. It doesn't make people feel like they are in a safe space and they can speak their truth. Be very, very clear that acknowledging does not mean agree with. It simply means I heard you. So what are some acknowledgements we can use? Thank you. That's an easy one. I appreciate you sh sharing that with me. Thanks for your transparency. Thanks for your honesty. I can understand that. Those are all acknowledgements that we can use that are not saying I agree with you. They're simply letting that person know that you heard them. The second step is always going to be asking a question. All we want to do by asking a question is put the ball back in that person's court so we can start to understand that they're positioning a little bit more. Sometimes people talk themselves right out of the objection and other times they don't. But in those scenarios, we can glean some important insight into how to follow up correctly or just get some overall feedback on our products and services if we can't ever get them over that objection. So let's just walk through two that are very common and how you might be able to handle them. You need to choose what's authentic and genuine to you. So this is why you're going to write down all those acknowledgements and all those questions for the top four to six objections that you're getting and you're gonna practice them with yourself and with your team. So when someone hits you with them during an objection, you don't look like deer in headlights, you don't lose access to your brain, and you're able to handle them very, very well. So let's use the typical one of, wow, that's expensive, or oh my gosh, that's more than I thought, or holy cow, I had no clue it was going to be that much, right? So let's acknowledge. Thanks. I appreciate you sharing with me. I'm just curious, Sam, I know that you said you did a lot of research about cool school thing. Where did you think that the investment was going to come in at? right? I'm just asking a question and putting the ball back in their court. If Sam didn't tell me he had done a lot of research, that is not the question that I would use. So we have to ask the right question based on the conversations we've had. But again, it's merely asking a question and putting the ball back in their court. Holy moly, I had no clue it would be that much. Hey, I appreciate you being honest. Um, I know that you've never done cool sculpting before and you were really excited to transform your tummy. Like, what did you have budgeted for this transformation? You're just putting the ball back in their court so that they can either articulate what investment they were looking to spend and maybe there's some wiggle room for you. Maybe they're going to talk themselves out of this objection or maybe you're just going to gather some relevant information. If you have a pretty good rapport with someone during the consultation, I think this next question that I give you can be really, really used quite well and quite effectively. 
So in that scenario, let's say someone says, man, that's just definitely more than I anticipated. Again, regular acknowledgement. Hey, I appreciate that. Um, I don't know if I can always do it, but what number had I written it down would be like, no brainer, let's do this for you. Again, I, I don't know if I can get there, but, uh, but I'm just curious. And then they're going to give you a number. And what I'm always so surprised at is let's say we quoted the person $6,700 and they're like, you know, I really didn't want to spend more than $6,000. Well, internally, myself and my team, we always know our numbers and we know what price point we can go to where we still get a healthy margin. We're still not bottom of the barrel. We're still not competing with the cheap practices out there, but we allow the client to move forward because there's a little bit of wiggle room. And if the numbers are really far apart, well, then maybe you're not going to pass go. But if someone you quoted 7,500 and they didn't want to spend more than 7,000, hopefully you can find a way to move forward. And I know some of you are thinking, well, then aren't you just discounting the service and you know lowering the value of it? Absolutely not, because you're going to frame it in this way. Sarah, you know, I know that it was $6,700 and you said you could do the six. I know that our practice has been looking to get some more reviews and some social media footage. So I know I'll step out and talk to my manager if you have to do that. If not, don't say it. Um, and just see that if we move forward with the $6,000, as long as you're open to leaving us an honest review, I think we could get that done. Is that something that would work for you? Easy. I'm not discounting it. She gets a discount, right? But I'm getting something of value. So she doesn't see this erosion of value in what I'm offering. She sees, oh, I'm giving them something of value. And therefore, they're giving me something of value. So let's do another objection. I need to talk with my spouse. Totally understand. Not a problem at all. What type of information do they usually want to know? What type of questions do they usually ask? How do you two usually process these types of conversations to decide if you're going to move forward or not? How are he, how has he or she supported you or not supported you in the past with things like this, right? Just any question that you put the ball back in their court. And similarly, if you have a good relationship with someone, you feel like you've built good rapport. I think a more pointed question that you could ask is, Jim, not a problem at all. I totally get that you want to talk to Sarah. I'm just curious if Sarah says no way, is are we dead in the water or is there another option for you? right? It's a very transparent question. And sometimes they say, yeah, if Sarah says no, we're dead in the water. Or sometimes they say, well, you know, that's right. I have some money on the side, or maybe I could do it X, Y, Z. And again, that's just giving me the information that I need to be more effective in my follow-up. So anytime you're hit with an objection, you're going to acknowledge and you're going to ask a question. Acknowledge so they know that you heard them. Ask a question so the ball is back in their court. And then you can regain your confidence and your intellectual faculties as they are getting ready to repeat something or say something new to you. And then you just keep going back and forth through this so that you can glean more insight into how to get them to move forward. I love it. It's effective. Write it down, practice it, and I promise it'll change your ability to turn more prospects into paying clients.